Welcome to Yong Tuition. Let's continue discussing basic issues in climate physics. Today, I'm going to answer a seemingly simple question, namely, can an object heat up a hot object by means of radiation? Let's go have fun. <laughs> The reason why I discuss this question is because even some well-trained physicists have taken for granted that the answer is yes in the context of the explaining the global warming due to CO2. Nevertheless, if I show you that their answer is in contradiction with basic laws in thermodynamics, what would you think? Well, many people would just follow their idea unless I have found some sufficient amount of evidence that nobody had explored before. So, I am a little bit nervous at this moment now. No, just kidding. According to the zeroth law of thermodynamics, the temperatures of two objects would be eventually the same if heat transfer is available, which includes thermal conduction, convection, and radiation. In other words, no heat transportation would occur whenever two objects have the same temperature. Now, consider two objects in the infinity space of vacuum. In this case, the only heat transfer mechanism is radiation. Don't you agree? If their temperature are the same, say 288 Kelvin, no radiation would occur according to the zero's law. However, if one temperature is 288 Kelvin and another is 255 Kelvin, which object can radiate thermal energy to another? Of course, it should be the hot one with temperature 288 Kelvin. To be exact, the radiation intensity or flux can be quantitatively described by Stephen Boltzmann law, where sigma is an universal constant and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Therefore, the answer to our question is no. Is that clear? Notice the second term vanishes if the temperature of the absorber is closer to zero Kelvin. But one should always remember there are two terms in Stefan Boltzmann law in general cases. Now, let's discuss several counter arguments you might have known from physicists who are either in support of or against the global warming caused by man-made CO2. First, they take a microwave oven used in kitchen as an example. A chicken can be heated up no matter how high the chicken's temperature is. So they say, look, a hot object can be radiated by microwave. But what is the emission temperature that Kleistron, the source of the microwave, they didn't say. I will tell you now, the power of the microwave oven is around one kilowatt. The cross section of the waveguide connecting the microwave source is about three centimeters square. Therefore, the radiation intensity is 1000 divided by three times 0 0.0001 equal to three times 10 to power 6 watt per meter square. If we convert this radiation flux into the emission temperature of the microwave source, the result is 2,697 Kelvin. Do you think the chicken temperature in your microwave oven is higher than 2,000 Kelvin? Second, someone used an infrared thermometer such as this one. As a, another example, 
to prove that the cold atmosphere can heat up the warm surface. How? He argued that the fact that one can use an infrared thermometer on the ground to measure the cloud temperature, which is lower than the surface temperature, indicates that a cold object can heat up a hot object by means of radiation. Sounds plausible. What do you think? If one assumes that an infrared thermometer has the same temperature as the ground, then his claim seems reasonable and even irrefutable. Unlike those simple thermal piles used in the 19th century, such as John Kindle, the thermal radiation sensor nowadays is equipped with an electronic amplifier that enables an infrared thermometer like this one to detect very weak infrared radiation emitted by a relatively colder object. That's why you can measure the temperature of the cold object relative to the environment you are in. It should be pointed out that just because one can detect the radiation signal from a cold object doesn't necessarily mean that one can prove the detected radiation is strong enough to heat up a hot object. This is similar to how a radio set works. I knew this since I was a boy in the communist China. I, I took great risk to build a shortwave radio set to listen to our enemy's radio stations, one of the highlights of my childhood. A radio station emits the RF wave in all directions, but the radiation intensity decreases inversely proportional to the distance square. Yet, a simple radio set can pick up the RF signal from a particular radio station to drive a earphone. By adding a power amplifier, you can hear the sound from a loudspeaker. But you have to provide a local power supply. But can we use a radio receiver or microwave receiver to harvest energy to cook the chicken? No way, unless one believes in Veritasius or Sibelius Hausenberg's jokes. ...up there, convert it into electromagnetic waves and send a beam of that to your ground station. It is true that direct infrared measurements are essential for us to further understand how the atmosphere surface system works. And hopefully we can gain more new insights into the fact that the mean surface temperature of the Earth has been so stable by any human standards. So whenever you hear someone claims that the radiation by water vapor and CO2 can be described by Planck function at one temperature, please ask him or her what the temperature of the target absorber is. Unless the temperature of the target absorber is as low as the outer space, for Kelvin, you can always say, no, you are wrong. Thank you for your viewing. See you next time.